Because model railroad layouts are basically static except for the trains, uh, it's uh, always a good idea to introduce uh, something that uh, moves uh, if you can. Uh, in this case, uh, I have added a flickering campfire uh, to my little trailer park here. Uh, there are kits that you can buy to uh, uh, make these uh, uh, flickering uh, campfires, uh, but they cost like $40, $45, and uh, it can be done a whole lot more cheaply than that. Uh, so uh, watch and learn as I show you uh, how I uh, accomplished uh, this flickering uh, fi uh, campfire. This is a jack-o'-lantern light. Uh, I purchased this uh, a few years ago at a dollar store, and uh, this type of thing is uh, still for sale. Uh, it has uh, three LED lights in it and when you hook it up to a power source uh, they flash. So this one comes apart it has screws so it came apart nice and easily and uh, what you need are not the lights but the circuit board. Uh, I've already uh, disconnected this. Uh, these two wires uh, uh, hooked to the batteries. The, the black one here is the uh, negative and uh, the uh, solid wire here is the uh, positive. Now uh, it's uh, very important uh, that these uh, are not confused because uh, uh, if you don't get positive to positive and negative to negative in an LED, they will not work. You also must realize that when you're dealing with LED lights, you can only use uh, direct current. Alternating current doesn't work because of the uh, positive and uh, negative uh, uh, poles uh, within the uh, LEDs. Now, uh, I'm not going to be using these particular LEDs because uh, they're way too big. Uh, I modeled an N scale, and uh, this, uh, if, if I put this in uh, under a campfire, uh, it would be like a 12-foot <laughs> across a campfire. I've got to make something smaller. So the first thing I need to do is uh, to uh, remove the uh, LEDs that are in here and uh, making note of uh, one thing in particular and that is uh, which one of these poles at the bottom as you can see uh, the uh, uh, LED light is pushed through and then soldered and uh, one of these is negative and one of them is positive and you need to know which. So uh, what you do is look through this large LED here and you will see uh, uh, two triangles Let's see if you can see this a little better up here. This, this thing will focus on it. It's not showing it too well. But uh, when you have, uh, I believe this is a, uh, a five millimeter. Uh, when you look inside, on one side you'll see a large triangle and on the other side uh, you'll see a smaller triangle. And the large one is negative and the uh, smaller one is positive. So the first thing, uh, uh, so I'm going to uh, write down on a piece of paper which one of these uh, is, is uh, negative and which one's positive because that's where I'm going to attach the lead wires that are going to go to uh, my campfire. So uh, I will uh, write that down now and uh, also set up my uh, uh, soldering iron so that uh, I can uh, remove the uh, 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 LED lights and I'm also going to uh, replace these two wires that I cut loose from the battery. Okay, I have uh, written down the uh, positive and negative poles where they're placed uh, on the circuit board so that I'll have that to refer to uh, when uh, uh, I start putting my lead wires on. Uh, for uh, my purposes, I have chosen to use uh, the colors uh, yellow, red, and blue. Uh, the uh, yellow and blue will lead to the power source, and uh, the uh, yellow 
red and blue lines will uh, lead to the campfire with a black line coming back for the negative. So, uh, my uh, hot soldering iron's been heating up. Uh, I've uh, got my helping hands out here because uh, I need uh, a third pair of hands here to hold it for me. Clean off the tip of my soldering iron. See if I'm hot enough yet. Okay, it's one lead. It's another. Okay. Let's see, I guess I better get them both at once. Now, one of the things you want to avoid here is having the solder run across and touch each other. <laughs> okay. So, again, we'll put it on here and pull out. And then we'll open up. Come along. All right. And now that I have that done, I can start putting my leads in. Alright, I've cut my wires and as you can see I've already added my power lines, yellow and blue. Um, uh, I'll take my uh, hand and dip it in a little flux here, just in case it needs it. This is supposed to be pre-tinned wire, but I never trust it. Okay, I think my soldering iron's ready. Now, there's a little hole here that the solder is filling. So, I'm going to stick the end of my wire through the hole. And again, I've got the black wire and it's going into the, into the positive. See how it goes in? Excuse me, to the negative. I have to make sure that it makes contact with the metal. Uh, see, it's it's not attached. Have I got it now? Okay. Okay, now we're attached. It doesn't pull out of the hole. Okay, we'll set that away and get that little glob off my it's here, and uh, we'll do the yellow one here. Get a little flux on it. Soften up the solder and stick it through the hole. Okay, let it harden. And we're stuck. Okay, so I will continue. I'm going to put red and black here and uh, uh, blue and black over here. And then I will have my leads. Uh, remember, I said I'm making three. Uh, of these flickering fires, so I will have uh, three black lines going off here to the three different fire uh, place, uh, three different campfires, and here I'll have three yellow wires going to the uh, 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 three uh, of the uh, uh, individual lights, and uh, so that will be split, and uh, this will head to my power source. So uh, I will finish putting in uh, uh, the rest of the wires with the uh, uh, black and the negative and the colored wire on the positive and uh, get back when I have that finished. I have all of my wires uh, connected now so this is the time to do a test. Uh, I have a little battery pack here with uh, two AA batteries in it to make three volts and I'm going to be using three volt uh, uh, lights. Uh, by the way I bought these I think I got five of them for eight dollars on uh, Amazon. Uh, have to supply your own batteries. Okay, so I will connect my power source 
here. And uh, I have a test light. This is a uh, two millimeter uh, light. Uh, and on here, again, the uh, you can look inside and see the large triangle uh, for the negative and the small triangle for the positive. You can also look here, the uh, negative will always be the shorter of the two. See, one's longer than the other, one is longer than the other. And uh, the negative will always be shorter than the positive. So I'll uh, spread these out. Uh, I've got to turn my power on. The power source is on here. So I'll connect the black to the short. And the power here. And there it goes. Now see, it's going to flash and the, the different lights will come on at different times according to the circuit board. But as you can see, I have everything good there. And we'll try this one. And that one works. And we'll go to here. And we've got nothing. Uh, everything looks good on the solder. Uh, and I did put them where I said the negative and positive is, but that's the most likely thing to be wrong since the soldering looks good. So this time I'll put the blue one, which is supposed to be positive, on the negative, and the black one, which is supposed to be, well, yes, that's what's happened. My chart was wrong. I screwed up there, but this is easily fixed. So I will have to go back and reverse the blue wire and put it out on the outside and the black wire and put it on the ins inside. And uh, then I will have the black on the negative and the blue on the positive the way it's supposed to be. So uh, I will take care of that and uh, then we'll move on. Now that uh, the uh, wires are attached to the uh, circuit board, and all that's ready uh, to uh, install. Uh, how are we going to hold the uh, LED lights together in groups of three? Well, I bought these buttons. Uh, buttons don't come in six holes, they come in four and two. Uh, so uh, I took some buttons. These are just a little over three eighths of an inch. I guess they're seven sixteenths. And uh, that's the size hole that I want to uh, drill uh, in my layout to place these through. And as you can see, now that I have six holes, I can place three lights together and they're held real nice. Now, when I splice the uh, wires to the bottom, uh, I'm going to be using shrink tube to cover the spike splice and it will also slide up uh, over this and once it's shrunk and holding tight here it will uh, hold the uh, um, LED lights uh, uh, really well. So, uh, but uh, because I want to paint, these are all white lights, and because I want to paint them uh, red, yellow, and orange, uh, I can't really do that uh, uh, after I place them in the button. So I'm going to need to uh, uh, paint uh, these and I'll be using an acrylic paint uh, and uh, the white light will show through very well but instead of uh, being white it will be red, orange, and yellow. So uh, I'm going to paint my uh, LED lights and uh, then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to do splice using the shrink tube uh, on uh, the LED lights. All right, we're going to attach the wires. You can see I've already attached the negative wire, which is black, and it went on the short prong. Now I'll attach the yellow wire to the yellow painted uh, LED light. Let me grab this here. I'm just going to wrap the wire around a few times to hold it in place. Put a little 
flux on it. solder really only needs to be soldered in one place and once that's done let's clip the shrink tubing on snug against the button so that it covers everything heat gun to shrink the tubing by the way this heat gun cost about fourteen dollars on Amazon been using this one for five years maybe it's twenty dollars now There we have the first one. Now, uh, it never hurts to check. So I will go ahead and uh, check my light to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does and that it burns yellow. Now, the main thing you have to remember here is that colored wire goes on the long prong because that's positive and the black wire goes on the negative prong because that's negative. So uh, I will uh, finish doing the uh, other two colors on this button plus my other two buttons for my other two campfires and uh, then we will get to the layout to install them. So here's my hole underneath where my hobos are going to go. Uh, it'll be their campfire. I've uh, placed a piece of masking tape across the top to prevent this from going through. Now I have 3 8 inch uh, uh, plywood and this is 3 8 of an inch right here so that works out nicely for me. Uh, all of uh, you who have uh, different kinds of sub bases uh, will need to make uh, adaptations as necessary. So I've got uh, some Eileen's tacky glue here and I'm just going to put that around the edges of my button. And then I'm going to shove it up in there. And let it dry. Oh, maybe I better put some in the hole too. Because all this is going to be covered up. And those of you who are wondering what happens if a light goes out? Well, then I just have two lights. And what happens if two lights go out? Well, I can do all of this all over again. But I'm counting on it not happening. Okay. So we'll push, push this through. And we use wires here to give it a little support so it doesn't fall. I'd like it to be nice and flat, but it's not necessary that it be nice and flat because the top's going to be covered anyway. Okay. reach over here, be sure I'm not pushing through, okay, so we'll let that sit and uh, also 
in trying to figure out how I was going to attach my circuit board, I decided that since the I had no screws that would fit the little holes that are in it, I would also just glue it up. So as soon as our glue is nice and dry, uh, we will begin to wire the hobo's campfire. While the glue is drying, uh, we need to have something to cover the uh, LED lights uh, up on the top and uh, something that uh, approximates a campfire. Uh, I have uh, uh, drawn these uh, circles uh, bigger than uh, the hole, the half inch hole I cut in. And uh, to make my uh, campfire, I'm going to use uh, clear silicone caulk. And uh, this is rather expensive. You know, for two more dollars, you can get a great big huge thing that works in a caulk gun. But uh, I got this because I'll never use all of that caulk for the last two, but this I bought dried up before I used it again. So I think I, I spent uh, nine bucks on this. Uh, but it works great because it's nice and thick and it dries uh, clear, a little bit clearer than what you see here. I've uh, uh, squirted some on this piece of paper and then I'll take it and put it in the center where the LED lights are going to be and we'll just lay it in. And once we have the uh, center portion covered where the lights are, we kind of pick it up like this and that will make our flames. Uh, I'm not sure it shows too clearly. You can see from the side uh, how the pieces pick up and it will stay there and it will dry like that. And then I can paint it red, yellow, and orange uh, with the uh, uh, acrylic paint. So these little pieces will be cut out and glued over top of the hole uh, that uh, I drilled for the uh, campfire. And uh, once that's glued down and we hook up the power, uh, we will uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, have our, our campfire. The glue on my button with the uh, LED lights in it is uh, dry. It's nice and strong. Also the glue holding uh, my circuit board is uh, dry. So uh, at this point I want to point out uh, a couple of changes I made. If you see in the uh, the twisted uh, wires here, I have yellow, red, and white. I do not have blue as I had originally planned. The reason being the blue looks too much like black and the black and blue together was uh, uh, giving me problems. So now the uh, uh, line leading from the orange LED light will be white. Uh, I've kept the blue and yellow for the power supply to the uh, circuit board. Uh, to differentiate it from, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, green and white. You might be able to see over here. Excuse me, that's the green and red uh, that goes to the street lights. Also down here, you'll notice uh, that I also have put in the white over here to go with the red and the yellow. And I have removed the two black leads over here and only have one negative. Um, my knowledge of electricity is uh, very limited. The main thing I know is you need a complete circuit for it to work. Uh, I don't know what the circuit board, uh, you know, where the circuits are and what it does. So I tested this and no matter which light I connect to any of these, uh, I only need to connect to the, uh, this one or actually it could have been any one of them, or back to the blue line over here. But uh, I chose, uh, for the sake of making it look nice, to make one uh, negative line right here, and all of the negative lines will come to this. And uh, by the way, I did put in these, uh, uh, these are uh, half inch uh, hex uh, screws. Uh, they are copper plated, so they uh, conduct very well. And uh, I will be able to just simply wrap these around like this without any splicing. See? 
So that uh, will simplify a few things. And uh, so now those lines are there and uh, when I get my other lines coming up I'll just wrap them there the same way. So uh, the next thing I want to do, do as you can see I've, uh, I've got the power line up here and I've pushed it through a hole and uh, I have uh, got another line. If you can follow it across it runs all the way across to the other side and then uh, up to the right hand corner where I've uh, taken it through the uh, sub base and that's where the power battery pack will be attached. So now uh, I'm going to uh, uh, splice the uh, wire leading up to the uh, power source to the wire leading to the uh, circuit board and uh, I'll show you that it's uh, uh, exactly the same as when I attach the uh, wires uh, to the LED lights. <clears throat> Alright, I have uh, pulled this wire through because it'll be easier to work here than, you know, this one just barely goes through. So uh, the one difference uh, that I'm going to do with this than I did with the uh, uh, LED lights is uh, I'm going to put a 16th inch shrink tube on uh, this one, but then I've got a 1 8 shrink tube that'll uh, cover all of it. And that will make this line stronger and then I'll pull the whole thing uh, through over here. So, uh, we'll go ahead, uh, also try to keep this away from up here where the heat is or it'll start shrinking on you. <laughs> and we don't want that. So, we just put these together like this. It's a little more on there than I need, so I'll clip some of it off. And then I'll fold it away from the shrink tube, like that. Okay. Fold it away. Crunch that down a little bit before I solder it. Uh, this probably doesn't need any solder. Uh, this uh, cold splice should hold, but it never hurts to solder a splice. Let me clean off my soldering iron tip. Just a tiny little bit of solder. Okay. And then when it's cool, we bring this over, cover it up. Shrink it. And do the next one. And this one, it doesn't matter which way you push it because this is so much bigger than everything else. So, uh, we'll do that. And a little flux. Clean my soldering tip. Okay, and pull 
this over the whole thing like that and shrink it. So, then we can bring it through the hole and feed it back up to the power source. Also, I'm going to put the twist back in the wire and that's good. Okay, now that's the same way I'm going to uh, uh, solder links onto the... Uh, let me move the camera. Yeah. Over here, I'll be soldering extra links on here to come over here, down like this, and then up into here. There will be no soldering here. It won't be necessary. So uh, I'll take care of that and uh, get back with you. This has been a learning experience for me. Uh, the circuit board uh, has been removed from my layout because uh, I have run into a problem. And that is, if I only used the uh, one uh, negative line, then this is the only one that fires all three. It is necessary when using this circuit board if you want the lights to fire uh, uh, in the way the circuit board is determined, then you need to have the negative lines going with each positive line. So I had to uh, put them back. And as you can see, I put a line in down here and a line in over here with the red one. But over in the yellow one, apparently when I removed the uh, negative line here, I also pulled out the collar that was in there. I now have no way to connect my uh, negative line here, I cannot solder it. I cannot be sure that I'm going to have a connection. So, I need a new circuit board. I have ordered one and uh, it should be here in a couple of days and uh, then I will uh, complete the uh, this clinic. Again, this is a learning experience for me. I hope the electricians out there are not laughing at me too much. But uh, believe me, when I'm done I will have a flickering campfires. Three of them. I have received my uh, new uh, uh, circuit board and uh, this time I was able to put it up with a couple of screws. I had some screws that fit the holes in this. Uh, everything is wired exactly the same as it was before except the power instead of coming in at the top it comes in at the side and uh, I've gone ahead and attached uh, my uh, uh, yellow positive and yellow negative, red positive and red negative and uh, white positive and uh, uh, white negative going to the orange uh, uh, LED lights. Uh, and remember, uh, these are the lines that come in from uh, my uh, little trailer park where I have the two trailers. And this line over here goes over to the hobos that uh, I show showed you uh, earlier. And I've added a third line down here and this is going up into the mountain where I have some uh, campers and they're going to have a campfire too. Now there's uh, one uh, other thing that's different that I want to show you on this and I will move the camera in a little closer. I have removed the on-off switch that uh, came with this uh, Jacko lantern uh, light. Uh, this is where it was attached at these four points here and uh, I have uh, put a hot wire in right across here and that will join the uh, positive and the negative uh, parts of the uh, circuit board uh, because I'm going to interrupt the uh, positive and negative uh, at my power source. So now that I have all my wires connected and everything is set and ready to go, it's uh, time to do the final test. Here's the uh, little trailer park and uh, uh, as you can see I have uh, placed the little sheet of acetate uh, with the uh, flames, the uh, painted flames on it uh, that I showed earlier. 
and we'll turn on our power and there it is as you can see they flash one two three one two three one two three and uh, that's what I want it gives a nice flickering effect the only thing I have left to do uh, is to uh, place the rocks around that uh, uh, encircle the uh, campfire and uh, then I'll have a complete set uh, as you can see I do have the hobos campfire up here and up in the mountain I've got another campfire where my campers are so uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out and I'll show you the finished product before I place the uh, stones around the uh, campfires I decided that the uh, half inch size was uh, way too big that's six foot eight in my scale and uh, so I cut away uh, some of the uh, clear acrylic caulk that I used to make the flames and then uh, I put some uh, black paint around uh, to uh, cover up uh, where the light would show through uh, the rocks and uh, when the paint dries uh, then I'll place the rocks and uh, I'll have a campfire now that is about a little over four feet and uh, that would be much more realistic so I've completed my uh, campfire at the uh, Ma and Pa's trailer haven as you can see it's uh, much smaller now uh, I'm very pleased with it and uh, uh, I hope that you've learned something from this clinic especially about circuit boards because I know that I did